So we'll call the meeting to order. And just first up is to approve or amend the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be added to it or are we good to approve as written? We need to add the appointments to two rivers. Um, so you can, I don't know if you wanna do it down with um, fence viewers, you could do it down there. As you know, we make our annual appointment and Two Rivers was looking for some paperwork. So we just found out who they were gonna be, same as they are now. Oh, oh, our representative. Yeah. Two Rivers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's it. So we'll add after the fence viewer? Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay, anything else? No. Just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, um, and then uh, to, to begin the meeting, we have our Pleasant Street Sidewalk Alternatives meeting. Um, so we will. We have, yeah, Chris Lathrop from Du Bois and King is via Zoom, and Rita Cito is here from Two Rivers, along with Sarah Rate from Two Rivers, and they're going to be outlining the three grant alternatives. But <clears throat> there was a little bit of change, kind of. I wasn't completely following Deborah Pierce's email, so are we having another meeting? I was like a little confused. Um. So. I guess one of the things was um, with the original grant application, the scope was to look at um, replacing the retaining walls, not knowing exactly what this, you know, the full yeah. commitment was at the right. time. <laughs> um, and so what she had recommend to the project team was look at replacing the full wall as one of the alternatives. So we know sort of the full scope. Yep. And then the other alternatives is sort of like, uh, you know, partial wall replacement and then um, so on, just so that we can have a comparison of all yep. two or three different alternatives. Uh -huh. And whatever the town does decide to um, select out of the alternatives, then we can use that to, um, present to the trans to say, we'd like to modify our scope of work. This okay. is what the the town mm -hmm. is selecting and then kind of go from there. Okay. Um, one of the things was, um, I guess at some projects, they kind of combine these alternative meetings with sort of like a public information meeting because perhaps the alternative or the selection is pretty straightforward. Uh -huh. So they kind of combine the two, but this one is just, a little bit different enough, okay. Uh, depending on, I guess, the wall choice. Yeah. Um, is that um, they would need to kind of have the trans review sort of the proposed alternative. Yeah. And then once everything kind of goes through the checking, then uh, we can proceed with having a another meeting, which is a public information meeting of the final okay design okay. And, and things like that. All right. So that's There's kind a lot of, the, of emails going back and there forth. There was, and, was like, and right. that's fine. It's just kind of more of like a V trans procedure. Yeah. They want to do it this way, so we will do it that do way. It, that way. it, it, <laughs> okay. it is what it is. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. That so um, before, I guess before we get started yeah. on the alternatives, um, Sarah in our office would like to just say a couple of um, things. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Slowly. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sarah Raitt. I'm a senior planner at Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Commission. The State Department of Health has generously made some funding available um, to support participation of um, folks who have been underrepresented in planning discussions historically across the state and who've also suffered the worst of health inequities across the state. And they're particularly interested in supporting their participation in these kinds of planning discussions around transportation. So um, we do have some stipends available for those who um, identify with any of the following groups. If you're low income, if you have one or more disabilities, um, if you are a black indigenous person of color, a refugee, an English language learner, um, LGBTQIA+, or if you identify as unhoused, um, those are the groups that the state is targeting for stipend support. 
um, for these kinds of planning processes. So if you're interested, um, there is a quarter sheet on the front table where you can get my contact information. You can reach out to me. Your, your name and identity will be kept anonymous um, and private in the process. There's a little bit of paperwork that will help you fill out, and I'm happy to support you through that. Um, if you're on Zoom, there should be a message in the chat that Teresa's dropped yeah. in with my contact information. Mm. You can also just call our office and ask for Sarah, um, and I'll help you through next steps. Thanks so yeah. much. So yeah, so if anyone's here in the audience and you couldn't hear Sarah very well, there is a little flyer on the table that <clears throat> there's a possibility if you might qualify for $50 stipend for coming to the meeting and participating tonight. So just being here is participation enough. So certainly take a peek at it and you can get a hold of Sarah and it's all confidential and she helps you through the paperwork. So um, if it applies to you, please take advantage of it. It's not often the state's giving away money, so. <laughs> we all pay for it in the end. That's right, so take it. So, um, so Chris, are you going to start or is Rita? I, uh, unless she has anything else to say, I can dive right in. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my name's Chris Lathrop, Du Bois and King. Um, I was there in September for the um, local concerns meeting, and since then we've developed three um, alternatives, um, which we'll be going through tonight. Oops. There we go. So um, I'll give a brief project overview, a brief talk about the project development process, share the purpose and need we, we um, came up with after the local concerns meeting, present the three alternatives, and then open it up to questions or concerns. Um, again, the, the project, uh, for those of who weren't here last time, um, is along Pleasant Street from Sand Hill to the school. And the, the intent is to uh, replace the existing sidewalk and the original intent um, was certainly to make a five foot sidewalk. Um, the, the one that exists today is three and a half to four feet. Um, and there's, as you're all well aware, there's two retaining walls uh, along this stretch as well that, and a piece of one of them that's actually leaning in. So it feels quite narrow uh, adjacent to the roadway. Uh, so the first two alternatives that we'll talk about is replacing the existing two walls, pushing those back to allow for a five foot sidewalk along this entire stretch. And the final alternative will be just to repair a piece of one of them. Um, that will mean that the sidewalk will be narrower uh, adjacent to those walls, either the being the existing width that it is today, or we can discuss um, pushing the curb out, you know, six inches or so, just to make sure you have a minimum of, of um, four feet. Um, but the majority of the project would still remain um, replacing the sidewalk with a five foot. So just a little bit of project background. The town applied for a grant in 22, um, a bicycle and pedestrian grant, uh, and was awarded that grant that fall. Du Bois and King was retained in June of 23. Um, we did survey and um, other project setups and then came and had the local concerns meeting on September uh, 25th of last year. So as part of the federal funding comes a fun um, bunch of things that you have to follow. Um, this is the flow chart from the VTrans Municipal Assistance Bureau. Um, very quickly, the, you know, the project was selected for a grant. Uh, it was VTrans authorized the town to proceed, uh, at which point Du Bois and King was the selected consultant. And then we held the local concerns meeting. We've developed the purpose and need statement, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, and that was submitted to VTrans. And then we've <clears throat> gone through and done alternatives. And I'm here to present those tonight. Uh, moving forward, and the real purpose of this is for the select board to see these, make a decision on which alternative they'd like to proceed with, uh, at which time Dubois and King will um, do the conceptual design. And as Rita mentioned, we'll come back and do a public information meeting to discuss that. Uh, and then it moves into the environmental process and I won't go all the way, but um, then it goes into the design and construction. So at the local concerns meeting, 
Um, we presented an overview of the project and requested feedback from the public on issues or concerns. Concerns raised during the meeting included property owner impacts, recreation center drive access concerns during construction, uh, project schedule, if there was a best time to construct, best time of year uh, during school, uh, during the summer, um, when, when's the least usage through that area, impacts to pedestrians during construction, and then the drainage basin down near the school um, is in disrepair and was mentioned and hopeful that it would be in, <clears throat> replaced as part of the project. Um, I'll just note that of these concerns, we certainly all have them on the back of our mind. The only one that we really should probably discuss tonight as we go through the alternatives is the property owner impacts because that varies with each alternative. Uh, whereas the other, the other concerns are associated with all three alternatives. So after the local concerns meeting, we drafted up a purpose and need statement in conjunction with um, Rita and Therese. Uh, I'll just read it real quick. The purpose of the project is to improve and enhance safety, mobility, connectivity, and universal accessibility for pedestrians in the community. And we identified the needs as the existing pedestrian facility within the project limits are narrow, lack proper curb reveal, and the existing bituminous sidewalk surface is heaving, cracking, uh, resulting in inadequate access for pedestrians, especially ones with disabilities. Uh, one of the retaining walls along the back of the sidewalk is leaning further towards or further narrowing the sidewalk width. In order to accommodate a five foot sidewalk, both retaining walls will need to be removed and reconstructed back from the roadway, addressing both accessibility and wall safety concerns. Uh, several of the ramps uh, at driveway crossings are not um, ADA compliant with respect to sidewalk grading. So that would be addressed as part of the project. And then as I said earlier, grading and rim elevation adjustments are required to the drainage structure near the school. So and as it relates to replacing the walls and moving them back, there was two alternatives um, looked at. One is uh, replacing it with a cast in place concrete retaining wall, which is out there, which both of them out there are today. Um, are you able to see my mouse? No. Oh, wait, no, I can. Yep. Okay. So this, this is the existing... Um, face of wall out there today. So as I alluded, in order to get a five foot sidewalk, we need to remove the existing one and construct a new one further back to get you the five feet. Okay. Um, so this particular one shows a typical one-on-one -on -one, uh, slope, you know, to be OSHA compliant in, as part of the um, installation. Um, in, in This would be up until you get to the, the trees and the two properties. Um, however, we've, we've uh, this vertical line here, we've shown as kind of a contractor design supportive excavation, uh, but talking with our landscape architects, um, the, we'd be excavating almost vertically upwards, you know, within five feet of these trees, and there's no guarantee that they would survive um, so that's one, um, certainly one thing to be considering as we look through and determine what the best option is here. So this is, uh, I'll just say, this is wall one, which is in front of the Applequist property. Yep. And this is wall two, which is, I believe, in front of the Ketchum property. That one's a little, um, not quite as high. But again, has a couple maples, um, you know, in vicinity, close enough that I, we don't believe that they would survive um, if this option was was installed. So options there would be, um, you know, remove them and replace them with other trees, or not replace the walls. So then. This is a continuation of alternative one. Um, the gray here is obviously the sidewalk. This alternative represents a five foot sidewalk down the entire stretch. 
the green area shows kind of the limits, the impacts uh, to the properties behind in order to grade back um, or excavate back and, and, and install. And again, I've kind of, I've shown the sport of excavation in front of these two trees, but just want to read it again. There's, there's no guarantee, even if a contractor can install it in front of there, that, that those would survive. So, and then this is wall two, similar situation in front of the Ketchum property. And as you can see, you know, other than the wall locations, the rest of it's mostly inside the right of way and really limited impacts um, beyond the sidewalk. And then we get down near GW Plastics and the end of the project near the school. Um, one thing I did realize today is your intent was to reconstruct a piece across the street from Green Mountain Development. That did not make it into the plan yet or the estimate. Um, but if that's still the case, we'll 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 add that because I know you wanted you were looking at potentially moving a uh, the crosswalk to this location. Right. Okay. So I can stop there for just a second, see if anyone has any questions before I move on to the, the second wall alternative. And does anybody have any questions on that alternative? No? Okay. All right, you're good on this end. Okay, well, and actually there is one, one more slide. So that, that, that one um, we've estimated at, um, uh, it was like, 715,000 with a $107,000 um, contingency, which is 15%. Um, and I know, Therese, speaking with you, that's well above the um, what you have for a grant amount. So right. another consideration as we pick alternatives. So the total for this one was 822,270, right? Yep. Yeah. So moving on, um, the second alternative is nearly identical to the first. We're still trying to get that five foot sidewalk along the entire stretch, but in lieu of doing a cast in place wall, we're proposing a precast concrete gravity wall. Um, they're typically cheaper to install. Um, they're they're, they're uh, cheaper to <clears throat> manufacture and certainly cheaper to install, and you don't need to excavate down as deep. Um, I failed to mention in the first scenario, I think the geotech recommended five feet below um, existing grade for frost protection, whereas these precast concrete gravity walls have some ability to flex, um, and therefore they only need to go down a couple feet below grade. Um, still have similar um, concerns with the trees, um, but there is a there is less potential. They, they don't get quite as close. So again, this is wall one and the shorter wall two in front of the Ketchum. So uh, outside the wall areas, this scenario is identical to the first, just slightly less impacts across the Applequist property and the Ketchum property. And because of the cheaper wall, uh, cost of the wall and cost to install, um, we have this one estimated at uh, just about 722,000. So Chris, just to be clear, we cannot, with alternative two, we can't necessarily guarantee the that the Ketchum's trees or Apoquist trees will survive, right? We're still kind of can't that guarantee. Is, that's correct. <clears throat> okay, just wanted to be clear. Thank you. So these were the, you know, the original kind of three was no, no alternative or these two alternative different wall types. And, and um, after speaking to Reese and Rita, we decided to, you know, provide a, a third one, which would minimize these impacts. And so, instead of replacing both walls in their entirety, just the first wall, there's a 40 foot section that's leaning. The rest of it looks like it's sound. Um, so this proposed, this, this alternative proposes to, again, do a five foot sidewalk 
up to the wall, only repair the 40 foot wall section, um, remove that section, replace in kind, and then have, um, you know, three foot six, or if we push the curb out, out into the roadway, six inches or so, get a four foot path along the wall, widen it back out to five, and then narrow it again when we get to wall two. So we wouldn't touch the wall in front of the Ketchums or the other walls. This is just saying we're just going to replace that 40 foot section in front of Applequist that's leaning in just that's, for clarity for everybody that's, here. That's correct. And it's the red spot right here. Yep. Yep. Dave, you had a question? Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't see any drainage behind these concrete walls. It's going to be tipping again. That piece well, in the bottom is enough. This is just. This is just concept, we, you know, if we obviously during the design process would would detail that. So, yeah, and then the rest, the rest of it's again, identical uh, other than the two walls, wall locations, we'd still be providing the five feet of, of um, sidewalk width. And that one was a little cheaper. Um, that comes in at about 520. Um, but I will say again, I, I, I did miss 120 foot across the street. I forgot that was supposed to be included. So um, this would go up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So as it relates to uh, comparing the alternatives, um, we believe they all meet the purpose and need. As far as resource impacts, uh, those are to be determined. There was an archeological um, assessment done uh, to date and there was a small resource potential on the Shetty property. So UVM CAP has recommended that they go forward and do uh, additional testing there. Um, that has not occurred, but that as far as I know would be the only potential uh, impact of resources. Um, <laughs> as it relates to utilities, there's really none other than, you know, adju potentially adjusting one of the sewer manholes uh, elevations with the, when it's paved adjacent to it. Um, private property impacts, the first two are certainly at least moderate. Um, and I had alternative three is moderate, but that's probably minimal. Um, same for right-of-way impacts. And I think all three meet the grant requirements. And as far as it relates to schedule, um, at the earliest, we're looking at a 2026 construction. So since our grant is for 530,000, um, Obviously, this is, I'm sorry, your construction estimate. So where would we, we're going to need more funds because Dubois and King needs to obviously engineer it. And if the construction cost is 520, um, <clears throat> which is currently what we, we, you know, we're not going to have enough money within the ex existing grant. So what are, do you know what our options are? Yes. So um, other town projects that I've managed have, some have been successful in requesting additional funds from the grant program. Uh, one of the caveat is usually they want to see the project in a more developed way. So if they've cleared right of way, mm -hmm. the design plans are pretty much ready to go to construction. Um, and they just show like, what is the gap and why perhaps? So I think if that, if depending on the alternative that the town selects, and Chris moves forward with kind of the design. We get through uh, environmental clearance and right of way. And then we kind of have sort of the most up to date costs going into construction. We can um, apply, say, for the year 2025 yeah. um, for an enhancement request yeah. to kind of add um, to, to hopefully make up for the gap. Okay. Is usually sort of been. The, the ways that other towns have kind of made it the gap. It's also hard to remember when you go out and write the grant 
for 530,000 and then there's changes in Absolutely. you know quantities or the cost of quantities right. or tonnage of whatever and payment was when we <clears throat> wrote the grant and scoped yeah. it out we knew the wall was going to be sort of an unknown right impact yeah. and we yeah. didn't really know exactly how much that would be <clears throat> yeah um and so this this was kind of i guess you say the the risk of that but yeah um, I think the three alternatives that Chris provided are kind of manageable mm -hmm. um, to kind of address that. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, ultimately, the walls are kind of, I don't say a smaller piece, but overall, you, you still have your sidewalk length from, you know, Sand Hill all the way to this school. Yeah. So, so. Um, Chris, if you went with alternative three and you're just doing the wall repair, um, does that give us a better chance of saving the Applequist's tree or are we still kind of in the same? I know it saves the Ketchum's trees if we choose alternative three, but what does alternative three do for Applequist's tree? Yeah, that one. Um... <laughs> They're not here tonight, so I just want to. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that one would have to go, as okay. opposed to probably three under the yeah. other two alternatives. Okay. All right. Just they're not here tonight, so just in case um, she reaches out. So, but it would save your trees. Yeah, Dave. Maybe. Is the cost of replacing the trees as you spoke of a possibility? Is that in this number? It is not. It is not. Can we get one? <laughs> yeah, we would have, yeah. Yeah, we would just include it. We'd have to speak to the AppleQuest if they wanted one, and then we could we include it. Yeah, we could include it. Yeah, they might. And we could include it into the more well, fully designed number, project. The number, number for replacing each tree. I don't know. Chris, do you have any idea how much it would cost to replace a tree? I Oh, well, it all obviously all depends on the size. Right. Um, yeah. You're not going to replace those the, the the trees on the Ketchum property. No. no. In, in, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Not in kind. No, no. Just like a smaller tree. I'm sure it would be more of a, either a shrub or a um, because you you know something yeah something reasonably sized. So, yeah. Right? A couple of few grants. Two trees. Yeah. yeah. So I had a couple of questions. So looking through it, I guess I had assumed that the minimum width that we needed for the sidewalk was five feet to be compliant. But looking at alternative three, you've already had in the alternative about a three and a half foot sidewalk, which is the current width of that sidewalk there. So at that point, why even touch the wall? Like, why not just leave the wall alone? If it's leaning, it's leaning. Can't we just move the curb replace as is you know um reset the curb put the, pave the new sidewalk and and just leave the retaining wall leaning um are you talking about from start to finish have it the original width or just in front of the walls well basically i guess if if we go to uh, alternate three yep. so instead of, in alternate three instead of fixing that one section of wall that you have at whatever it is 40 feet or whatever it is yep. Yep. and you show even fixing that a three and a half foot sidewalk why not just leave the wall alone as it is and just replace the sidewalk well it's leaning over i forget how many inches but you know you're already at three i think three foot minimum three foot is the minimum and you can you have to have it uh, wider than that every three um it's either two or three hundred feet um I know that the Apple Quest wall is only about 180. So keeping it narrower than than four feet through there is 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 acceptable. Um, but I guess I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, I, I guess that's, that's up to the town, I guess. I mean, so just to back up. So the original reason why we applied for the grant was uh, for a couple of things. One, that B-Trans is going to be coming back through here in a couple of years to redo um, up to the school. And that current sidewalk right now is actually, uh, the elevation of the sidewalk is actually below the street level. So we have water, ice buildup that gets on that sidewalk. 
uh, that becomes hazardous. So our what we wanted to do was um, reset the curb, mm -hmm. uh, put, put new sidewalk in, and then we ran into the wall issues. Now we had yeah. assumed when we applied for the grant that you know we needed a five foot rule on width of sidewalk. Right. But being that we don't need that. You know, I mean, that wall has been leaning as long as I've been here. I know. Um, I need to double just... check. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that because we wrote it in the scope of the grant. I think that may be the problem here is that we we knew that a section of the wall was leaning. And I'm not sure. I don't have the grant application well, we, in front We wrote of me. the whole mm -hmm. wall in the grant. We did. And now we're not doing it. So well, it's, I'm not sure. It's, does it matter? What Do you have any idea, Rita? What? Because then you don't have to worry about tree removal and, you know, I mean... I just don't know. I mean, within the scope of the grant that they, that VTrans approved, obviously is the crosswalk and the sidewalk and all that sort of stuff. But are they going to balk if we decide to leave the wall? I think the wall overall is going to be a smaller piece of the project. Okay. The main project is really the sidewalk. And we are majority of the sidewalk is going to be improved to five feet. Yeah. It's just these little sections. Um, I think like Chris said, we're going to have to double check with the trans if the town yeah. did choose to say, you know, the wall is too much of a can of worms. Yeah. Can we just get by with just improving what we can right. based on the sidewalks and not um, touch the walls? We'll have to see what the trans says. I mean, because just looking at the estimate, I mean, I would assume that by not touching the wall, you're going to save fifty to eighty thousand um, dollars. Correct. Then to make sure it stays in our budget, and then we don't have to worry about we cut the trees or not cut the trees, and it's right. it's, it's at that point, it's not going to be punitive to anybody's property. And <laughs> now we do take the risk that the wall falls down in ten years, but you know. You actually have a three and a half foot sidewalk, or you actually, when you walk down through there, you actually maybe are only three feet of space. When you walk, space. when you walk down you know, there, it feels more like three feet because you feel crowded by the wall. Reed and I have walked it. I've so can we push times, the curb so out to get? I you'd have to push the curb out to get the three and a half of and, walkable. I think it's said three was the minimum. I think that's what Chris Lathrop said. What's the minimum, Chris? Three, three and a half. I will have to double check, but I think it's three feet. You can have up to, like I said, 200 feet or 300 feet, and then you have to have a wider section. So we're, okay. we're fine with that, with both wall sections. Yeah, yeah. Right there. But if the, if the wall is leaning in six inches, yeah, you actually lose that space. Right. And you're walking up through it. Is that part of the... Is that acceptable? Right. So I'll we'll we'll double check. And to your point, what and, and I mentioned earlier, we can we could steal a little bit by when we remove the curb to reset it, you know, move it out six inches. It's you know, obviously that narrows the road, but it gains you space on the sidewalk. Okay. Because I mean I, I would it... just I would just note uh it's Steve, right? Who asked the question? Uh Chris. Chris or Paul? Oh, well, I guess okay. it, whatever one. Yeah. Just okay. yell at one of them. Just Steve. <laughs> Just yell. Anything but Steve, you'll get some. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So um, I guess I lost my train of thought there. Sorry. <clears throat> the steepness of the wall. Oh, so in, in regards to the leaning wall, I guess one thing I would, would um, say is like, we're going to be, you know, the contractor will be excavating adjacent to that to install the sidewalk, um, you know, a foot or more, because you got five inches of sidewalk and then, you know, six to 12 inches of gravel. So during construction, that might become a little bit more unstable. True. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. All right. Something to think about. <clears throat> Excavate just a little bit and tie it back. There's people who do that. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that's not out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah. All excavations and you tie it back without going back into that tree. Yeah. Yep. You dig a yep. hole out here 40 feet and you run a big rod through and you pull that wall back straight up. Yeah. You don't have to excavate. Right. 
Yep. Yeah. More of an identifying All right. construction um, protection. So the process is, um, I think I made a note here. Um, so you need the select board to um, decide on a preferred alternative tonight. Well, you know, t tonight or sometime in the near future for in order to for us to move forward. Yeah, well, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, we can't afford alternative one or two. I mean, I feel like it's, you know, I mean, it's kind of, we just, you know, seems like, and I, and Mrs. Ketchum, you, oh. how it, you wanted to, if I remember correctly, you were hoping your trees were not impacted. Is that correct? Yeah. That's what I thought, Marguerite. I just didn't think they would be, they're not really that close. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't think our law was, any no, no. Yeah. If they could fix the one by the parsonage by Applequist, you know, just get that so if it wasn't leaning in, I would think yeah. that would. Yeah. And if they, if we can't, then what we're talking about is kind of going out, you know, resetting the curb and gaining you some more width. Yeah. And, um, but not necessarily maybe touching the wall, but gaining some width yeah, I towards. I don't think that road should be even much narrower because <laughs> when the trucks and the ambulances and all that kind of stuff come up through there, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of extra room. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true when you're walking on the sidewalk, you feel like they're kind of right there. So, and I, I think Chris had alluded to it at the beginning. So the other concern that we had when we were putting the grant together was, was so if you can envision it now, the, the crosswalk for the school right now is right in front of Milato's, uh, we'll call it the, yeah. not on the lot side, but in front of the, the business portion of it. Yep. And so the kids cross there and then, then they have to walk up a little ways and it's not really identified very well. Right. Um, so the other hope was to move the crosswalk up um, to kind of like where the end of the lot is at Milato. We talked and then have a direct crosswalk <laughs> with a ped pole there that yeah. would go to the ball fields. And I noticed that the ped pole and stuff wasn't in the estimate. So we, yeah. you know, want something that kids can push. Yeah. And flashlight, we, you know, exactly. Uh, and we stuff. talked about that and looking at what at either alternative, either leaving where it, it is, where it is, or moving it forward, but either way, creating a substantial, you know, more attention to it to make it a safer crosswalk. So that was part of the grant as well. So yeah, there is a. <laughs> B-Trans usually poo poos those, but because you're a class one, um, you, it's certainly at liberty to install one. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why the crosswalk is in the position it is now is because they didn't want the kids because back when, um, uh, when the car dealership was functional, um, they didn't want the kids having to walk through the, you know, a busy entrance to the car dealership. So they shipped them across the street uh, which was a safer alternative, but now that that is just a a lot that's mm -hmm. doing nothing, it'd be nice to have them cross up direct across. Yeah, um, and there is there. some sidewalk on the other side coming up closer that Rita and I looked at. So there is existing sidewalk across the street because I don't. Isn't that the rule? You're supposed to crosswalk. You have to go sidewalk to sidewalk, truncated dome to truncated yeah. dome. So yeah, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. And where they the cross, safety. there is no truncated domes right now. No. So that would have to be. Much there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely yeah. that was a big push for it. it was part of the safety of it. So can we get some revised numbers before we make any decisions? Having that, that crosswalk in there and what the find out whether, when, whether or not we can it's three foot six, or if it counts the wall leaning. Or take like the wall out. So do you want us to kind of refine alternative three? So three A would be, you know, repairing the wall, adding the crosswalk stuff in, and then alternative three B, you could say, is no wall. Yeah, with the, with the with the crosswalk. Yeah, crosswalk the crosswalk yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what I'd like kind to see. Yeah, kind of see the yeah. if, if that's doable. Yeah. 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 And these these numbers that you have here now are based on current construction costs. So if the project isn't getting off the ground for another two years, 
is that there's probably going to be increase in construction costs. And that's where there's like the contingency, contingency kind of built in. Right. With that, right. Assuming right. it covers everything. Well, you know about contingency. I know. It's kind of, it's like, how much contingency should we, you know, yeah. 25%, 50%? It's, yeah. Yep. It's kind of hard. But. Mm -hmm. It's been very, very difficult to to estimate projects the last two to three years. Things just keep going further and further up quicker than you can believe. So, yeah. No doubt. So does the board agree with what Rita was just talking about, that we would have a, a 3A, which the 3A would be, um, <coughs> which would be the alternative the way it is right now with the added crosswalk. And then three B would be no, not touching the wall at all with the crosswalk. Because he does have some crosswalk stuff in the estimate. If you look at concrete three, I mean, he does talk about. Um, so I think there were some cross markings. Yeah. I have the markings, but I don't have the rapid flashing beacons. I don't believe okay. flashing beacons going to run you like twenty grand. Yeah. You know? So it's <laughs> exactly. I think, uh... Well, probably a few years ago, a set of rapid flashing beacons were like 18 grand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just, yeah, just put one in for 20. So, yeah. Yeah. About that. Okay. Um, do we know what the old car lot uh, is going to be in the future? Um, I think early on it was mentioned that maybe look at limited act or limiting the access there. Do you, do you want a raised curb island across any portions of that to narrow it up? I'm, I'm, I don't, I mean, it's, it's their property and we have no idea what they're doing. We currently, we don't know what their plan is. So I don't really want to invest, you know, any money there if we can avoid it. Um, <clears throat> because we do not know what their plan is, Chris. Yep. Okay. And yeah, I'm not sure they know. So we may need to consider something there as the destination um, sure. is, is as opposed to just dumping them into the middle of a, you know, driveway. Yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I guess because it looks like because there's several accesses in. So I, I assume you could do sidewalk and then a break for the entrance and then sidewalk again, kind of getting us down, limping us down to the school. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I will, I will reconfirm the, the minimum if that's three feet um, or I'm pretty sure it's three feet. Uh, I just put the three foot six there because that's what it looked like was existing. Um, but we will confirm that and uh, put together two kind of three, a alternates. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. You, uh, there needs to be a break though, right? Where at the end of our uh, property, uh -huh. there's a break there. Yep. And that's where I go in. There. We have a right away there. Yep. And there needs to be a break there because that's where I go in and out. Okay. They took it down back and they, uh, and with my camper and stuff. <clears throat> so, Mr. Umbrellas is saying that right at the end of his property, he has a right away over GW's or Nolato's property. And there's a break there right now. And he wants that to stay open. He parks his camper and stuff and he can go in and out right there. So he yeah. wouldn't want us to install sidewalk right there. And, it's and that's right. That's all part of that paved parking lot. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. in this area. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And it's right at the end of, of their property. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So we don't want to build anything there. <laughs> Did you have any questions, Marguerite? Yeah, I mean, and that's the alternative they're looking at is not touching any of your trees and maybe having to deal with one of Applequist's, but not all of them. That's if they do the wall section, that 40 foot section near her house. <clears throat> and if they don't, then none of the trees and your trees, if they choose this alternative will not be touched. <laughs> It, I guess it could be in places, but it, uh, 
you know, there's room for people to walk side by side there. Yeah. And that's what he's saying is that there'll be some that will be five foot and then we can get away with going narrower and then, and then making it wide again. So we would, it sounds like alternative three would not affect your, your trees or your wall. And um, just that we'll have to decide about the leaning piece near Apple quests. So, mm-hmm. so that one probably should be fixed. In, in alternative three, it shows when you do the wall repair, it shows using the uh, cast in place concrete retaining wall. Could you could we use the gravity wall? The other, the other style retaining wall instead. Isn't that more expensive? I guess it wouldn't be our recommendation to mix and match. There's going to be, I forget what it is. It's like 20 feet of sound wall. And then, and then there'll be this 40 feet of repair and then you're back to the same. So we're really thinking to keep the same, same style. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I might've missed it, but in order to keep the process moving, would, would we be able to have the changes for the next select board meeting, which would be two Mondays from now? And then uh, we yeah, could, I think so. Yeah. Because then we then we can look at that and vote on it. Hopefully, make a decision at the board level to move the project forward faster. Right. What's the plan if we don't include the wall and then the wall falls while they're excavating? <laughs> a lot of tears. Well, you dig, <laughs> dig in. well then well, you're going to apply for more grant money, aren't you? I'm assuming we would. I, I we'd hit our con- the contract provisions for whoever the contractor is. There is going to be some stipulation of like you know stabilizing, securing the wall during construction type of thing. Yeah. So do we know how deep the wall is? Um, they bored. I'm not sure if Chris knows. Lathrop. I didn't quite hear that. How far does the existing wall go down? Was one of the questions. We're not sure. Of what the height is. I didn't think so. Uh, should go down a third of what the height is. So if the height's five feet, should be down, you know, three, a, three quarter. Yeah. A th- usually a third is buried. It's kind of like, like telephone. Hard to know. I think there's a little sure. more engineering to that because the amount of wall that's up there that has pressure mm. from the land, yeah. a third might not be at that particular wall. If there's only a third of that below, that's not enough to hold that earth. Yeah. I mean, I'm no engineer, but. I'll bet that the engineer will tell you that if it's only down there this far, so it's not, it's the not bottom, gonna hold right? that earth. Yeah, that's why he was it to lately has a footing that yeah. goes back underneath. So it's an L and the, yeah. that's what they're this, gonna put in. Yeah. To match what's gonna <clears> be there. Is it plan? We, did you, if we go that route, we may have to do some exploratory. Um, to figure out, you know, exactly what's there or, or make some assumptions and they'll, ex- you know, they'll figure it out when they excavate it. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. uh, one, one, I guess one suggestion I do have is, you know, do you want us to at least price out or uh, a tieback option to kind of repair the wall? As 3C? As 3C? Yeah. <laughs> Sure. I, I, Why not? It makes sense. We're going to be there. Might as well look at all the options. But that would have to be into the property. But uh-huh. It's just a but, hole. It's back in there. Certain isn't. You drill, drill a hole, put a plate in, you bore a bar through, mm-hmm. and you pull it back. I, am I correct? I, I believe so. I, yeah, I'll have to confirm with this our structural engineers, but... Um, and I was just trying to see if this, where the utilities were on their property, which it's not on this plan, but um, that'd be my only concern. Okay. So yeah, you'd need an easement from them to, you know, do that. Yep. Yeah. install those anchors, but you don't see it. It's uh, fine. We're no stranger to construction easements, so that's fine. So does that make sense, everybody, that will do a three seed with a tie back just to see what's what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good. Yeah. More information we get, the better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then Chris Jarvis is right. That allows us to keep the ball rolling at the next meeting, and then we're not holding up the process, and we'll have a better idea if, if um, we need to look for, you know, <laughs> 
Oh, more money or whatever. I don't know. Two Mondays from now. The next meeting, three maybe. I don't know. Um, so it would be we, our next meeting will be on the April eighth. So yeah, it is. Eclipse Day. Our next meeting is April eighth, Chris. You gonna wear your tinfoil hat that day? Nobody can travel that day. Yeah. So our next meeting is April eighth, Chris. So I would just need it like the Wednesday before that. Okay. <clears throat> to get it into the packet and all that. So maybe we we that. need it on the third. Yeah. Which that's only a week and a half. Uh, well, if if we want to get it in for yeah. a talking point. If not, the next meeting after that would be the 22nd. So do what you can, Chris. If you can't meet the April <laughs> deadline, we'll shoot for the next like we're meeting after. So it's up to you. You're the Sound, one. Sounds good. Yeah. I will I'll shoot for the first one. <laughs> Excellent. All righty. Any other last parting questions or No, I don't think there's anyone on. Uh, Jamie just joined. If you're done, we will move on then. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, you too. Thanks, uh... All right. <laughs> And uh, we'll get to Kurt here in a second. We just got public comments. So we'll open it up to anything that's not on mm -hmm. the agenda this evening that anybody wants to bring up. Um, I don't see any in person. So if anything on, on Zoom, anybody out there that has any public comment? I think it's just Jesse and Owen and Jamie. Jamie. The only two people I see out there. So not seeing anything we we will move forward thank you Steve then thank you um and we have Kurt here tonight so following back up with us let us know what's going on up in Montpelier we are um for the record Representative Kirk White, uh, I'm just getting used to that. You do that in all your committees, right? You have to say who you are and why. Um, <clears throat> I'd mentioned that in the legislative process right now, we're in this period that's called crossover. Officially, we just ended crossover. And what it is is, is that all the bills that uh, originate in one side of the two bodies in the House uh, basically have to be completed before... Uh, before they before the crossover date and be sent to the Senate or else they die uh, and vice versa. All the Senate bills have to be done. So at this point, there are there should be no new bills arising. I say that there uh, I taught a class at Bethel University on how <laughs> state government works. Uh, and uh, uh, the three people that showed up enjoyed it a great deal. Um, <laughs> Good. And uh, but and part of what I talked about was how Thank you. officially those bills are dead, but sometimes people will will amend something that didn't get taken and put it into somebody else's bill, and it becomes a, an interesting political game sometimes. Um, now, uh, a couple of years ago, my committee had a bill. Uh, it was a workforce development. It was for for uh, money for plumbers and electricians and CDL drivers and meat pack meat cutting facilities, all this stuff, really important bill. And the Senate decided they were, they knew it was really important and that we really wanted it passed. So they held it as hostage. Uh, they didn't pass it for a long time. And so what we had to do is we waited until a bill came from the Senate that would land in my committee. And it was an act relating to robocalls. And we, uh, and we, stripped robocalls out, put our workforce development bill in their bill and then passed it. And then uh, it goes back to them and they have to decide whether they like that or not. So it was a way to force it. So it's a game, uh, I guess is what I'm saying. And, uh, uh, and it can be pretty complicated, but in general, the theory is bill's dead if it hasn't passed crossover with the exception of the transportation bill, which goes for the whole length of the, the process and the and fiscal year budget, which also the fiscal year budget is the last bill that gets passed and the transportation bill is usually the, 
next to the last bill. So were there any bills that have died at this point that maybe should have been on the radar or things that maybe you thought <laughs> might have moved forward or should have moved forward or? I mean, uh, not that I'm aware. I mean, and, and, you know, those are all in their committees and whether or not they've been, you know, they've been taken up uh, and processed or not. Yeah. You know, it's hard. It's hard to know. Um, yeah. You know, my, my committee had this year, uh, we had, there were a lot of people with bills. Um, we, we had more bills than, and historically we had close to a thousand bills uh, in the two years that were proposed at any given time. You know, it, you, you pass 10% of those maybe. Um, so, uh, so there's a lot of bills that are just dead on the wall at this point. Um, I did want, so, and at this point during crossover, the previous two years were cross, uh, two weeks were crossover. And the first week was policy bills. If they're bills that have no financial impact. <clears throat> and, uh, and then the last week was the uh, money bills. And those are ones that do have financial impact where they're uh, either, either they're going to have to generate revenue or they're going to appropriate uh, revenue they already have, but one way and usually both. And, um, and so that last week was that this week we're, we're still full bore. So we've been doing about 30 bills a day. Um, and so it's a lot of bills to keep track of and, uh, so if you are aware of a bill, that's why I sent a couple of you a message saying, yeah. if you know of any bills you'd like some input on, let me know. Because I, I, yeah. I honestly do not hold all 100 bills in my head at any given right. time. Yeah. Um, when does crossover end? Uh, crossover officially ended last Friday. Okay. So right now we're, we're just getting, so now what we are getting is all these Senate bills and, and, the, and that were and and a lot of them have already they had come over from the Senate, but they were but because we were working on getting our bills done to get to the Senate, they've been just sort of sitting in a queue yeah. waiting. So now they're now they're being being worked on. So when will we know if they die? <laughs> How will you know if they die? Yeah, I mean like in the net, yeah, because I mean I you and I had emailed about the the tax the like, abatement. Like, yeah. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it's how do we know? We 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 don't until I mean, it, we don't it's, until they do. <laughs> it's it's at the it's at the whim of the chair. One of the things I said in my class was the most important people actually in the legislature are the chair committee chairs because they determine what bills get worked on and what don't. And if mm -hmm. you have a committee chair that just doesn't like a bill, or it's just not as high on their priority list as as it is on yours, uh, it's too bad. They just. Mm -hmm. They, uh, I think we saw in the Senate actually just recently uh, where uh, one of the chairs wanted to push through a particular bill that was a priority of theirs. And everyone else in the committee is like, it's not a priority. We don't, we don't care about this. And, and that, that chair was just like, yes, and we're going to work on this bill anyway. Uh, so it, and huh? there, there were senators that walked out. Uh, it was it was a VT digger. Um, you know, oh, there was wow. a whole article on it. So so that um, so it really comes down to the chairs have a lot of power. Okay. Uh, and so anytime you have a concern about bill, it's in a committee. Reach out to the chair. Uh, so we don't know uh, <clears throat> the things I wanted to mention that I thought might be somewhat pertinent to to. Uh, us is uh, a couple things. One was House Bill 829, and um, and this is a Ways and Means bill, and it's um, and so it, it's one of those bills that is probably special. There, are, like, like I said, there are some that get exceptions, and what it is is this is the um, some changes to the property transfer tax that's charged. Oh, yeah. Um, whenever you transfer property to someone else, um, they have, there's a tax that they have to pay. And, uh, and so they haven't, uh, they haven't really changed that too much since 1967. They thought perhaps it was getting time. And one of the things that they're doing is, so the, the way it's set up, was and still is, is it's what's called a marginal tax. And so what that means is 
is if you have a $400,000 home at you pay this rate at uh, for the first $100,000 value of your home and then you pay this rate for the second $100,000 of your home and this rate for the th whatever right so so um you don't automatically, if you have $300,000 home, you don't automatically pay the highest rate. You just pay that on what's remaining. Um, so what the plan is to do is, is to reduce the bottom rate. Uh, well, well, actually not to reduce it, but to expand it. And so um, right now it's 0.5% on the first $100,000 of the value of your home. And what they want to do is expand that to the first uh, $200,000 of your home. So if you're transferring, by the way, the transfer tax is paid for by the person who's receiving the home, not the seller. The sellers, the sellers don't, don't pay anything for this. <laughs> Similarly, if you just give your land to the, your kids, uh, you know, the, the, if, if they aren't paying, then there's no, right. And, and there's been some concern. They, there were some questions around whether or not it, taxes, you know, uh, for, for farmers and they pass the land onto their kids. There are, ex there are exceptions for those people. There's all sorts of exemptions and things in there. But the idea is if you sell your house to someone that usually this amount gets tied into their mortgage, they pay it. Um, so anyway, the 1.5 rate, uh, goes from the first hundred thousand of your house to the first 200,000 of your house. Um, and, um, and so that the idea is that for people who have a, a modest house under $200,000, which it's getting hard to find a house under $200,000, but if you find one, uh, they're paying the, the absolute bottom rate. So the property tax transfer on a $200,000 home is a thousand dollars. Um, so that's the, the plan for that. Um, for the, the over $200,000, your property transfer tax is 1.25%. Um, and, and that is still true. Right now it's currently uh, anything over a hundred thousand is 1.25, but they're uh, now it's over. And then what they've done is, and so ultimately if you have a house that is pretty much under a $600,000 house, your, your transfer tax will go down. If, what they did though, is they added another rate at $600,000 a house. That's 600. If your house is $600,000 or more, then the then you get hit with a 3.25 transfer rate for anything over the 600,000 and um and that the idea is that lower income and middle income people their theirs will actually go down but the people that have higher well, they'll have to pay more um this has proven to be tremendously controversial in the legislature. Um, and um, I attended a meeting last night at eight o'clock, um, in case you think the legislature is only a weekday thing. Um, and, uh, and there were, it was uh, fascinating to watch the, the people in uh, Lamoille County saying, well, three hundred thousand dollar house, pretty nice house. So six hundred makes sense. That's a you know, and the people in Chittenden County saying, you know, I have a, I I have a mo a really Studio. super modest house, and it's a six hundred fifty thousand dollar house, <laughs> and uh, and so um, so the arguing between the Chittenden County folks and the non Chittenden County folks was really fascinating, uh, and uh, so yeah, I don't know where that bill is going. It's probably going to come up maybe this week uh, to make that change, or it might not. It, it, it may, may actually die if they can't get enough mm -hmm. people to support it. But I thought that was a, an interesting yeah. thing. And also to give you an idea how these things work and how they're not always just a whole bunch of people saying, yeah, let's raise taxes on everybody. Uh, well, I, so, think it's, I think it's good that they're having that discussion because you know it's so often all we hear is 
you know, we always talk about income based, yeah. right? Everything's income based. And we fail to realize that sometimes just because your income is higher, you might be in a higher cost area of the state, right? So $600,000 in Bethel is a nice house, right? <laughs> $600,000 in Colchester is... It is is a small little house. Yeah. And we talk about the same thing with income, you know, yeah. I mean, $40,000 in this town might be a lot, but $40,000 in Burlington. Burlington is not a lot of money, you know? Exactly. So, yeah, you know, we always get hung up on that. Yeah. So there's a lot of, lot of there was a lot of heated discussion around all that. Uh, allegedly, uh, according to the data, which the representatives from Chittenden County disagreed with, but the data collected by the state uh, uh, housing folks uh, said that the average home cost in Chittenden County is four hundred fifty-four thousand uh, dollars. So, uh, so the Ways and Means folks, when they were putting this together, they were thinking, well, six hundred thousand is sizable bump above that. Um, but, uh, but the Chittenden County folks are saying, ah, it needs to be 800 to a million if you really want to hit the, the high end properties. Mm. So I don't know, but I thought it was an interesting, uh, yeah. Well, everybody gets hit if it's over 600, I mean, and the 800 or million, yeah, I whatever that is, it sounds like it's the first 200 is this, and then that's this, and then it's that. So it's kind of a graduated it's graduated. And yeah, so, so, so they, you know, on the lower end, yeah. people are saving money. Uh, and, yeah. that, and that was sort of the idea was, was to, to shift it that people have a $200,000 house are, are going to save money. Uh, and, uh, or, or, and, uh, or 300 or $400,000 house mm -hmm. going to save money. But if you have a $600,000 house, you're going to feel it. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We just need to educate people on not transferring it to your family. Instead, there's other ways of yeah. moving your property without paying any taxes. Mm -hmm. right? Well, if they if they transfer it to your kids and stuff, there's right. not you a can there's put no it in a trust. You can exactly do all kinds of things with yeah. that. And there's a lot of ways that you don't have to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and so actually, both these bills I'm talking about today. I, I mean, uh, I, I think I mentioned, I think to Therese was that uh, the briefing that the legislature gets on the bills that are going to be dealt with this week happens Tuesday. Uh, and so, so I, you know, I, I don't know as much about these bills as I will tomorrow at this time. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm going from what I, what I can glean. The other one I think that's interesting is there's a uh, Act 250 Land Use Modernization Act, which they're trying to uh, get through uh, this week as well. Um, 128 page bill, um, and it rises out of three studies that were commissioned last year from the Natural Resources Board, the Regional Planning Commissions, and the Department of Housing and Community Development. And, and they create three three different reports that were all designed to then blend together and work together to, to come up with, with ways to uh, basically start to make act 250 less of a, a, a nightmare, uh, honestly, um, you know, having a, creating a professional board that oversees the administration of it. So it, it you know, just try and streamline some of that stuff. Um, um, you know, moving this from size of project being the determination of its the jurisdiction toward uh, a system of jurisdiction which is determined by location and so some of that is uh, they're planning on reworking the downtown designation process uh, right now there's three levels of downtown there's downtown and I remember the, what the three levels are. Um, the village I thought there's just two the village and the downtown the village downtown and neighborhoods. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. And uh, and so basically really streamlining that down to just basically really just two um, and uh, uh, creating only two categories while simultaneously creating three be financial benefit levels. That's tax credits uh, for public investment, uh, working upward from towns with limited planning and zoning. Uh, that's also another thing is is basically uh, part of this is if these towns don't have their own zoning, then then uh, the regional planning commission will sort of come up with a a hypothesis of zoning that oh. that town would would use, wow. and basically say this is what we this is how we think that you're probably going to be 
controlling the things in your in your town. Uh, so that's also a bill that is coming through. I know there's uh, I know there's at least one amendment to uh, also stream streamline, simplify, and create a study commission uh, on uh, uh, how to make Act Two Hundred and Fifty more. Uh, wood product friendly, wood product industry friendly. Uh, right now, Act 250 is really rough on loggers and and wood product processing businesses. And and we we have some around here, certainly in Northeast Kingdom. Those are large pieces of their economy, and so they're they're trying to to think about how to make those kind of pieces work better. There's I know there's at least three or four amendments coming through to this bill, uh, and we'll see how it all plays out. They're working on it. Um, part of the idea is to, uh, uh, here we go, here's a little note. Uh, the idea of the 250 thing is to relax jurisdiction in parts of towns and villages that need certain prerequisites, and it creates automatic jurisdiction when critical natural resources are involved. So, um, uh, so while it's not a housing bill per se, it builds on the last two sections by relaxing regulation for housing in cent town centers and idea of setting the stage for the creation of vibrant walkable with brand new sidewalks, uh, downtowns. Uh, and so that's the, the idea is to try and encourage and make it easier for people to develop in a town area. Uh, so those are the, the two main bills I want, I, I sort of thought to bring the other piece I wanted to bring up, which was, which was because I know some of the folks in the, in this room, uh, care about, uh, uh, the way our school boards are functioning and the funding behind property tax. And I know that there was even uh, discussion around, around uh, private schools versus public schools. Uh, and the, uh, just in case you, you want, you're aware, the governor has appoint has proposed and appointed secretary of education uh, who has a long history in the privatization of schools. So if you are not in favor of privatization of school and are your public uh, school money going to private schools, uh, you should, the Senate has to confirm that person. So I recommend you, you lean on your senators soon and often and hard. So um, I just wanted to throw that piece out because it's a, it's a thing that can travel under the radar if people aren't looking. So any other questions? What? She is a sec going to be a secretary, not a commissioner, right? She's what? She'll be education secretary, not education commissioner. <clears throat> I believe she's a secretary. She'd be secretary of education. I believe that's yeah. the title. Uh, and um, yeah, so uh, that's who you'll want to reach out for. Um, do you have any other questions? I can do my best. Uh, like I said, I don't have. No, no other bills on funding, education funding. So what? No more other bills concerning education funding? Uh, no other bills that are doing what with funding? Anything. Education. <laughs> oh, education funding. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're still working on all that. Um, and, and that's stuff because, because, ed, because education funding is a ways and means it's a, it's a, it's one of those special bills, um, because, and, uh, and so, yeah, I do know that that committee is working, working really hard on trying to, to figure out different ways to fund, fund, um, you know, public education, uh, also they're trying to look into, uh, funds. And I think there may be a bill coming through that, that, um, to try and help with, um, school construction and repair, uh, cause that's another big expense that, that schools are facing. They're, they're, they're working on it. They're, um, yeah, right, right now, these last two weeks, these are their, that was their big crunch period. And so, um, because they had to process everyone else's bills, not their own, uh, and so uh, now they're now they're they'll be back at that a little bit. I I saw the chair of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, uh, which again, as a reminder, Ways and Means are the people who figure out revenue sources that would be often taxes and fees uh, that that come into the and grants um, that come into the state, and and then appropriations are the people that pay out. So uh, Ways and Means are. Uh, 
are often the people everybody yells at. Um, and, uh, uh, and they're, they're working, uh, they are working on it and, and they sure, they sure look worse than wear and tear last night, uh, in that meeting, they were. I, I have a comment that it, it's been irritating me for years is the fact that ways and means they're always out there looking for more money. And usually that, uh, translate to more taxes and, my household and everybody else's household here, if we can't afford a loaf of bread, we have to cut expense. We don't go look to see who we can get more money from. Uh, do we have a ways and means reduction in cost com committee? Well, I mean, what uh, ultimately ways and means their job is, is to try to, uh, so it's a, it's a, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll own my part of all that, which is that every legislator there, if if they pass a bill that that has funding as part of it, then that becomes part of the the money that the ways and means the ways and means looks at and says all these committees say we need X amount of dollars. Our job is to now try and find those dollars, and if they can't find those dollars, then. You know, so they try and find the dollars, but then it goes to appropriations and appropriations often says, yeah, I know you asked for, I don't know, $10 million, but really we only have three. Um, that's all ways and means can raise. So you get three um, or maybe you've said you need 10 in order to do it. Otherwise, otherwise it's not worth doing. So even though that committee passed it bill that's, that says you're going to get 10 million, we're giving you nothing. Uh, and so, uh, and so that bill is basically dead, uh, even though it passed, but it's dead until someone can find funding and, and they may never find funding or they might three years down the road say, Oh, Hey, here's a vehicle to fund that. Uh, so it's a, it's a sedan. It's appropriations, not ways and means. Appropriations, the people that pay out. So they're the, uh, ultimately appropriations are the people who decide what bills that have been passed, how much money they get, if they get. And uh, the, the appropriations committee has one representative to each of the called policy committees, uh, you know, like mine, uh, commerce and uh, economic development. So we have one member of the uh, uh, appropriations committee who works with us and is trying to look at what we, what we have. And it also gives us feedback when we say, Hey, we'd like to put a bunch of money here. And, and he says, you know, we only have this much as a, as a pot. So, so think about how much you want to take out of that pot. Cause all these other committees are looking at that same pot. So if, you know, so don't, don't think you're going to consume it all. Uh, so they're, they're trying to give feedback to the committees all the time. And sometimes the committees listen and sometimes the committees are like, Nope, I'm going to go for, going to go <laughs> for, for the gold. And, uh, and then, and then it ultimately comes back to the appropriations and appropriations says, well, you went for the gold, but you aren't even getting bronze. And, uh, and you know, and that's just how that works. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that I yeah so understood that exactly. It's it's a it's a fascinating process. So, uh, any other questions or anything? All right. Well, thank you for thank, thank you, you for the opportunity and 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 uh, I know I'm doing these now the the second meeting of your month uh, of your meetings of the month, which means we've got April and May. Uh, and then because we'll close, we'll end it, the legislature will end in the middle of May. Uh, and uh, so I'll be back for those. If you know there are bills that you want me to talk about when, you know, beforehand, uh, all of you, uh, I didn't think of it till like last night. And I sent a message to Chris and Teresa saying, hey, anything you want me to talk about. But if you are aware of ones that you want me to, to address, give me give me a little notice and I'll I'll get I'll. I'll message people and look them up online and see what I can figure out so I can give you uh, informed answers. Yeah. So, good. yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have, um, we have a first and third class liquor license for Locust Creek store. Uh, and a second class liquor license, tobacco uh, Tozier's, license, and Tozier's has the first. Oh, I'm sorry. Class. Yeah, got it backwards. Mm -hmm. So first is 
first and third class liquor license for Tozier's and then a second class liquor license, tobacco license and tobacco substitute endorsement for Locust Creek store. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And Bethel Historical Studies request to hold a coin drop on the 18th of May. I'll let you know I did get, um, <clears throat> Joanne Marshall sent me their proof of insurance today. I will have to say that's one of the best drawings I've ever seen of what's going to happen. I know. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Joanne and Doug. But yeah, so um, I, I had written in there the motion to approve once proof of insurance is submitted, but I did receive that today. Motion to approve. Okay, all in favor? And then we have some appointments to be fence viewers. So we had Stan mm -hmm. Capron, Brad Andrews, Fred Griffin. I don't know. I guess you didn't like that guy. I don't know. Don't ask me. Ask Kelly. Paul, you should be a fence viewer. Yeah, yeah not anymore. Did. Not anymore. Hey. Picked him out. I don't do know. the fence I viewers do get this. in? Do they have to go look at walls and sidewalks? They have had to go look at something before. Yeah, like, <laughs> not walls, not walls. I was just just fence. Yeah. Enough, we had, we've yeah. had two or three in the past couple of years. Yeah. We've had to go settle, try to settle boundary uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, just um, so if everybody's good with that, just need a motion to appoint. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. We also added in the one for representative for Two Rivers. And if I understood Kennelly's email correctly, that Gene Kraus will remain the representative and you will be the alternate. So it must be you had a conversation with Gene. That's the way it's Yeah, Kelly said that you. <clears throat> Excuse me, she had not heard back from Gene. So I emailed Gene and he said, yes, I'll continue. Okay. And I've, I've been the alternate. Yeah, you have. So. Okay. So basically it'll remain the same, that Gene will be the first and you'll be the alternate. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that um, Bill Hall is going to continue as the yeah. tra transportation, the transportation alternatives. Yep. Okay. Second. Okay. So we had motion. We had second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we were talking about the last meeting there. Now that we have the sheriff's department doing some trolling, what do we do with our yeah. constable vehicle? Um, so yeah. I gave you the information I had, and uh, it's a little tricky for me at the cars, but I, I assume that I have the right model because I was looking, I knew it was a, by looking at the, um, the title, I knew that it was an eight cylinder. So I'm pretty sure I figured out the right, <clears throat> the right one. And um, so I just given you the information, obviously if we were to sell it to a non-police agency, we would not sell the additional, well, we wouldn't sell the equipment. Right. We would do something else with that. Yeah. So we haven't decided, so you haven't put it out there. So we have no, no, no interest yet. No, I haven't done anything. We know that the sheriff's department is interested. Um, that much we know uh, because they have said they were. And I think that um, in a past email that Oscar might have had somebody that was interested in it. And But again, if they're not police. So the number that you floated, is that what we would ask for? Well, what I gave you was the Kelly Blue Book information, and that would be for you to decide. I just told you what I had. <laughs> Yeah, I said this is what the value ranged, and then what's what the median price would be out of those two numbers plus fifteen hundred equipment, and and I just told you how much we paid for it, and I'm estimating the miles because one sixty four. Last time I spoke to Oscar, it was one sixty seven fourteen, but that was a while ago, so I'm just estimating at one hundred sixty four thousand, and um, <clears throat> but as I said, we paid eleven grand for it in February twenty twenty one. If, uh, you had to look at your crystal ball. How long do you think we would keep it? If we how how long do you how would long would you say that we're going to be staying with the sheriff's department? If you want to look at your crystal ball and say, Never. I think <laughs> yeah, well, just time. Wait for a year and a half. So yeah, I mean, I think you're just going to find like we've talked about is that it's going to get harder and harder for towns to do their own policing. Yeah, 
especially I small like force. That car is going to sit for a year. Yeah, and it, you're going to take best. that number that you gave here and just cut that into a quarter and hope. Well, it's going to need all the work done to sell it at that point. Yeah, I mean, like, and brakes and oh, calipers and the tires. Getting done in June. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we're going to have that car. Mm -hmm. Right after that, so we're gonna have to decide where to mm -hmm. put it and what to do is with it. Oscar, is the Oscar driving a Wilton car now? Mostly. Mostly, yeah. Uh, and we have no place to store this car. I don't mm -hmm. have any room at the town garage or we, we just don't have a place to store it. So I think you should mm -hmm. lose to? Yeah, occasionally. But yeah, we just don't have a place to store it. It would make sense to sell is it. Is anyone opposed to selling it? No, I mean I think the only caveat that I would have to it is that that we take the proceeds and we put it into the cruiser fund right. yeah. and at least yeah. let's get two three years or so under our belt yeah see if everything goes smooth because if all of a sudden well you know how it is i mean the board could change and all of a sudden someone want all yeah. it takes constables all it takes is someone to move into the area that mm -hmm. might have a law enforcement background and say yeah. i'll be the constable right right mm -hmm. and then everybody's like yeah we want the constable right mm -hmm. yeah. so i mean we have the cruiser fund now i would say my vote would be, you know, why don't we sell the cruiser um, and then put the proceeds into the fund and leave it there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I was kind of looking at what you had sent out to us and mm -hmm. I, don't know, I was thinking like nine grand probably sounded like a plus the equipment, you know, I mean, my guess is you're probably going to get somebody that wants to buy it for personal use. Yeah. So you'll probably have to take the equipment out and whatever i don't I mean, know what i'm doing with that but <laughs> properly dispose of it i guess probably could find a place to store that <laughs> and i could see what's <clears throat> there was something that was a radio i could see if the fire department wanted it someone will steal it <clears throat> so do you want me to put it out for sale or do you want me to just try to deal with the sheriff first and it's just give us what we're asking for then yeah. that makes life really easy it does all right i'll reach out but to but i <laughs> but i would suggest that if they want to purchase it outright from us that's fine yeah, but I, I wouldn't want to get into swapping. No, I don't want to swap the hours. Like I don't know how I'm going to ever. It'd be cash that. in hand, or yeah, you know. I don't know how I'm going to figure that out. <clears throat> so okay, yeah, I'll reach out to him first and see what he's thinking. Yeah, I mean, I'm and then if somehow we don't get any takers on it, then maybe we need to think of what else we'd like to do with it. But okay, um, I just realized that Jesse, uh, no one had a message in the chat asking what a fence viewer is, and so I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't get see it until just now. So is that you, Jesse? Want to know what a fence viewer is? Yes. It's actually one of those positions that's been around a long time. And they actually go out and if there's a dispute with your neighbor over where your fence is to be on your property line, they actually can go out and take a look at, you know, where the markings are for your property, whether or not you've had it surveyed, and they take a look as to whether or not um offense should where offense should be placed or if it is placed incorrectly they can uh, they can make you move it so onto your own property if you've you know encroached on your neighbors amazing thank you you're welcome okay so it sounds like we're we're all in favor of this <clears throat> so i'll reach out to the see if we can sell it and we'll put yeah. it in the cruiser fund and go from there and we just don't want and uh yeah i might get it out of them before then see what he says but um and try to look for the median price or nine is our bottom. I don't know. It's it's kind of seemed like looking at what you'd given us nine was kind of the number, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do we need the motion? Do we need Dave a motion did. to um, sell it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You have to authorize the sale. Yep. Dave moved it. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, right. Yeah, you guys are the only ones actually sell right. equipment. You know, Brian, he's a, uh... Mm -hmm. a wheeler and a dealer. Yeah, exactly. We'll skip over the next one. Yeah, right. It looks like you're going to have another appointment coming up. I just got an email from Eric Webb at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, I think they found somebody else to join the planning commission. So nice. I'm not going anymore. So you can accept <laughs> it or not. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, once you became a select board, oh, you just became an ex officio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though I don't live in Bethel, I actually can be on the planning commission. Right. But we got enough numbers now. Yeah. All right. So just a uh, motion so to moved. accept the resignation to the planning commission for Therese. So moved with regret. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's, Thank you for it. your years. Case. Yeah, I do enjoy it, but it's just too much. And they yeah. got a good group. And a second. Dave. 
Oh, did we did have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> oh my God. Don't worry. No, we don't have more worry. Things. I got other things. There's, there's another great flood coming. <laughs> there's like, shh. And I'm building um, the ark right now. Get a stick. House. We're going to start pounding them. Yeah, no. Um, and then, um, you know, is that time again to um, start the negotiation process with, <laughs> Make it sound with the town like manager? So, <laughs> so <laughs> now. Um, Although you should see my demands now. So the yeah. process. Uh, so. Um, <sighs> It's, I think it's September 15th, right? Is that how we drew it up before? Is that um, what the contract is? October. September 30th then? Um, that we have you until? Oh, I think it's like October 14th or something. Was I can't it? remember okay. what we signed. Some yeah, something like that. But no, anyways, some weird so we have some time. So what I wanted to do is like in the past, um, well, at least the past two, I've negotiated yeah. with you. So I mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to get... Um, the select board to allow myself to enter negotiations with Teresa and talk about an extension there. So we have, we probably won't talk about it for a month or two. It's just so that when the, yeah. when the light hits us and we have some time <laughs> that we'll start kicking around things. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the idea is to bring Therese back. So um, as we did, a, I had a, so just so Jordan knows, I had a three year, which I served and then this will, and then I want, I asked for a two year. That was a big negotiation it was a two year. And we changed some language in my contract only because when we get our time off in January made me in violation of my contract because I had too much time off. So that's the only thing we changed in last year's contract was we made it a th two instead of a three. And we just fixed that. So I obviously wasn't violating the contract with time off. Um, so Are we doing four now? No, <laughs> I think two is good. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, as we found out with one town manager that we had, is you know, if you have two, three, or six year contract, they can always break it. You well, know? and there's a um, there's a caveat. You know, there. there there's small consequences, but um, yeah, and and honestly, it's I believe I had to give you, which makes total sense, was ninety day yeah. notice if I wasn't going to. Um, to renew and um, so no. kind of the deal that I have with Therese right now is the the process for the, the whole town manager uh, process we have seen over the years is about a six month process. Oh, if you're looking for a new one, yeah. yeah. So imagine. So um, so what we talked about at the last time was you know that T Therese would give us kind of the wink nudge in February on kind of what she was thinking for. September. Mm -hmm. That way, if for some reason she didn't want to re renew, then it gives us that kind of six month or so process to get started. Um, so, so um, yeah. So no, I still things I want to do. Want so to the idea right now is, you know, between now and I got goals. <laughs> September, her and I will kick it around a little bit and then get back to you guys in September at some point to. Motion to authorize. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. And then, um, as we had talked about at the last meeting was, um, you know, it'd be nice to kind of, for us to select some goals for our board. Um, one, it makes it really easy at town meeting um, to, you know, kind of write up the blurb on what we did this year. Um, and in this case, we can kind of compare it to this is what we wanted to do. And this is what we did, you mm -hmm. know, uh, which, and, and, you know, the goals, a lot of times are things that, you know, a true goal or something that usually you don't really quite achieve. Like yeah. you almost get there, but you haven't quite got there yet. And <laughs> so if you pick easy goals, then we're really not really helping anybody, but we kind of want to, yeah. well, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's some things that just need to be handled and it's just, I'm, I know and some of these, I'm just not going to have time to handle them. So I mean, whether they're long-term goals or short-term, or maybe you end up with a mix of both. Mm -hmm. And I know Dave said no, because you were doing, aren't you working on the state estate committee about school tax? Isn't that what you said? It I, I've been trying to. Uh -huh. I haven't oh, had a lot of luck about, I don't, I'm not sure they really want us low-life outsiders <laughs> talking to them. We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't play the game. We don't play the games. Yeah. A lot of the people that, I want to be yeah. with don't play the games. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I, the, you were I think the idea would be I am working on it. 
Good. for us to have these goals that either as a select board, we can work on together, or maybe we have somebody on the board that really would like to head up that goal for the year. Yeah. Or in some cases, it might be a goal that we have that Therese can help us with. Yeah. Therese, I did talk to Therese last week when I was in there doing um, payables, <laughs> and she mentioned starting to work on some ordinances. So she printed off for now for me or whoever, um, the, like the traffic ordinances. Yeah, because that is one thing that we talk about is looking at policies and ordinances. And this is one that needs to be dealt with. Um, I've talked to the sheriff's office about it. They're willing to do give some assistance too. And so I think, I mean, that's, that is a long-term goal because obviously it takes a while to get through policies and ordinances, mm -hmm. but certainly I gave her the traffic one because that's seems to me to be the one we need to deal okay. with first. For me, mm. ordinance policy, what's the difference? So ordinance is more like a town law, whereas a policy is just a practice or a policy we try to adhere to. But an ordinance is the one where we have to have all the public hearings and you have to have the it's notice more and you have to have it warned. Yeah. Or, or and you do that. At, that's yeah. It. That's right. Yeah. Regular meetings. But an ordinance is you know, just like when we amend zoning ordinances or things like that. There's a public hearing and you have to have it in the newspaper for so long and you have to have it posted. And then once you vote on it, you can approve it. But I believe it takes 30 or 60 days before from your vote until it comes into effect because people can. So if we um, want public flogging, it would take a while to get that passed. It might take a minute. Never know. Yeah. It could go right through. <laughs> if you make maybe, a policy, maybe a quick one. it flies through. But if you make an ordinance, it's going to take yeah. a minute. Yeah. You guys so, like the dog ordinances. And the yeah. And we had done trash. that one not long ago. But trash ordinance needs to be revisited yes. with the attorney, yeah. which is a well, member, we need to make a change. And I have, I, need, I got to get back to um, the manure piece. Okay. I got to talk to our oh, town attorney, David Rue. Oh, yeah, so Wait, that has to be revisited. But, that but you have <clears throat> a binder full of ordinances and a binder full of um, policies. And Richard and I have been talking about, we have to update the water sewer ordinances. And so there's, it's, it's a long process and it would be nice to have a select board member, you know, spearheading it. That has some so would it be easier? To, it sounds like there's more than just one ordinance. So would it be easier and to just say updating ordinances and policies? Yeah. And then, and then, you know, at the year end review, we can say here are the ordinances that were updated this year or here is what we're going to work on for next year. Type yeah, of, right. Exactly. That, okay. that would take the whole year. Exactly. I mean, we still wouldn't get done. Exactly. Right. But it's it's a goal and and you can clear some of them you'll get done. I mean it it'll take you a while to do the traffic ordinance. I could take a few months, but or do we want to just say we're going to specify a certain ordinance that we want to work on? Well, you could do the traffic start with the traffic ordinance and you could do traffic solid waste um I'm doing the personnel policy right now. So, um, so traffic and solid waste ordinances, Is yeah, or some <clears throat> trash, traffic and trash. TNT. Oh, I thought the solid waste was the trash one, yeah. I just don't remember what we called it. I think we called it trash ordinance. Trash. Trash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you allowed to change with traffic without the state? <clears throat> Basically, it just talks about it, really clarifies where your stop signs are, where your yield signs are, that type of thing, because mm -hmm. and what your speeds are on a certain road. Yeah. Because when the sheriff, if he goes so to pull someone over and the right. speed limit is posted incorrectly, somebody fights their ticket, you're gonna the sheriff's gonna lose. Yeah. So you have to make sure that where that the roads are posted per correctly per the statute. Now you're right, as far as we're not going around lowering speed limits because with the current legislation, if we you can't change a speed limit without a speed study. Maybe I've explained that to you. Yeah. And, and the word it all stuff. yes, yeah, exactly. And they, almost, they almost never change them. So and they and besides <laughs> which is yeah, and it's it's crazy. They'll get back to you and be like, oh, it looks like you can go up on it. But then we did find that it was 25. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And that's part of the yeah, thing with the ordinance. And, yeah. and so that's a perfect example of the, you know, making sure that we. And are, is there a the speed sign system. where we said there's a speed sign, making sure that there's actually yeah. one there? Does it need to be put in or, you know, does mm -hmm. something need to be double, I mean, they call it um, double gated. So it's like mm -hmm. two on sides, that type of thing. So <clears throat> some of it's just, I don't think it's been looked at since the 90s. So. Mm -hmm. I, I know one thing I wanted to work on that I would be more than willing to help to is 
is establish a gravel roads maintenance plan for for our town just like you know we're we the most common practice is to have a paved road inventory you know because it's kind of easy to figure out when that (laughs) but but at the same time we need to do the same thing with the gravel roads and you know you know what is the life cycle of a gravel road and when do we need to add more material are you going to talk about the proper a properly built gravel road also well i think you know that would be the because we have we have we already we passed up take it over a road because it wasn't built according to state uh, specs to be a class three road. So we said, either you spend the money to make it a class three road or we're not taking it over. Yeah, that's, it makes sense because they'd have to build it to an A76 standard. So, I mean, certainly be something that's so that referenced would, that in there. part of it, I'm asking. <clears throat> well, I, th- I think the start, I think to start anyways, would be just to categorize our roads and what is the condition that those roads are currently in. So when's the last time we added a significant amount of gravel or not? So the easiest way to do it is you go and you survey your roads and you break them into red, yellow, green. So green is, you know, maybe something that we did in the last few years that's got some decent gravel to it. Yellow might be something that it hasn't really been touched in a while that's okay. And then red is, you know, we've been grading nothing. You know, there's no gravel left. We're just grading, you know, that. And then just kind of start with that so that we can start to say, you know, um, so for instance, with gravel roads, a gravel road should be the the life cycle of a gravel road before, before adding more materials about seven years is what some studies I read on, where a paved road is like 12 years. So... So it would be like building that life cycle of the gravel road. So uh, like a seven year life cycle of that gravel road. So that, and to help the public works department understand where they would be at in that cycle. So we, you know, maybe break it down into quadrants of saying, okay, here's the Christian Hill quadrant, or here's the Lilliesville quadrant, or here's the, you know, Gilead quadrant or, Right. North Maine or whatever you do it. And right. then, and then we can kind of, then, then we can budget it. Like, are we budgeting enough gravel or are we not budgeting enough okay. gravel? And if, if we're okay. going to break this to seven years and we need so much product every year and we'll just kind of yeah, divide it <clears throat> like we do for floods. Yeah. Just and, and then it. we can categorize, you know, especially this time of year, where are our problem areas, right? Some areas have some significant problem areas. Right and, by Dave's house. <laughs> and if we have those problem areas, those will be things that the next time we go to gravel in that area, maybe there's a, make it up. Maybe there's a 200 foot section that we need to excavate out and put some fabric down and put some gravel on because, or, or, or maybe we need to <laughs> fix some drainage in that area because it's, you know, not yeah. properly done. So th- I think that's something that we've kind of needed to do. I think um, so. Makes sense. Yeah. This was done back when Mo first turf got on the board and they did that back in 84, 85. Oh, no, okay. And then that kind of just got, yeah. So I, you know, so I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's it. Sounds like a, um, a something lofty to work on. goal too. Yeah. yeah, because the hard part in in my mind is you talk about inspecting your road. When do you inspect it? Because the and I'll go back to me. I have a spot on our road that I know needs some work. But if you wait another month to look, mm. it's beautiful. Right. Uh, right. But if you don't look at it. Uh, a month ago, mm. you'll never know how bad that spot is. I think, and this, yeah. and this might take us a year or two to do just yeah. because you want to survey your road at different times in the year. So yeah. when you're actually doing maintenance to it in late spring, right? Um, then you can talk about like, do we have enough material to grade or regrading proper mm-hmm. material? Or, you know, late March, April, we're talking about where are the problem areas that, right. you know, are just soup that we need to fix. Um, or drainage areas. And I think one of the bonuses of Chris and I both having to deal with the 2019 flood and the 2023 flood is we, we know what areas we've rebuilt and, and Morgan has a map of, and he'd kept up to date of where he replaced culverts. And so it's going to be, you know, Mm. a kind of a culmination of least we have some good Intel right now between the four of us, you know, um, AJ Morgan, Chris and I, and, and certainly from two rivers. So we have been tracking like where that stuff went and, you know, culverts things. So it'll be helpful. We know what 
lasted, what didn't last, you know, that type of thing. Yep. So we get two. <clears throat> yep. So I'm going to be working on the human service. <clears throat> me, oh, yeah. Human service advisory, trying to analyze, <clears throat> excuse me, try to analyze the whole process and see if we're hitting the right targets, um, or if we want to hit targets at all. You know, and maybe we don't want to have go that route for appropriation. So I've already, already got a couple of ex select board members that are interested in, and three other lay people that are interested in coming into that group to uh, talk about that. So are you talking about more um, kind of investigating, like, do we have enough appropriations <laughs> in that or? Excuse me. Well, it, it could be everything. We could say, well, like, you know, why are we doing appropriations? Streets brought up a good point the other day. Why are we doing that? If you want to give to the American Red Cross or if you want to give to whatever they are, you do it as a private citizen. Oh, gotcha. Are we, in effect, <clears throat> telling the taxpayers you need to support this particular group? Um, you know, I've been doing some research about all the surrounding towns and how they handle theirs. And it's quite different. They all have a different way of handling it. Um, so just kind of bring all that out and throw it against the wall and see and see what happens. So it'll be good too to look at the statute and see exactly what yeah. the statute says there mm -hmm. about it. I mean, I know. Yeah. They so instead of the the yearly meeting, you'll have some every month or every quarter or something to. Well, yeah, we'll have we'll have that. you know several during the year to to, and then have each each person kind of go out and do their part of the research and then bring it back again. <clears throat> just hold the process. Yeah, and just down see. Forth. And then we can Before present it to we can present it to the select board and say, okay, is this, you know, do we want to modify? Do we want to change, you know, how we're doing it? Or oh uh, no, we need uh, another fifty thousand dollars because yeah. you know we think we need more. Right. Uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so human that, services. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those organizations are 501c. So they're 501c. Yeah. So if it's going to cost me $20 in tax, that's I got to give you 20 bucks. But if I give it to them, right. it's a tax deduction yeah. for me. It works out better. Yeah. In a way. Mm -hmm. huh. I hadn't thought of that. Well, I was thinking about on the way back from the I wrote back to Dietrich from town meeting and I said that we were her and I were discussing it and like some people give to their churches some people have their certain places and I said to her you know it's like we're forcing mandatory giving via taxes and I said I wonder if we just abolished all of it then the tax rate drops and then we just you know and then the select board says to the residents take that we want you dollars and give it to we somebody. want you to give you give to who you want to give to you know and, and but since there's a statutory place where people could can petition mm -hmm. i'm not sure you're ever going to get away with it so paul's approach right. of managing it may just be better yep but so, it was an interesting thought okay. well, that's that's one thing and Therese also mentioned about yeah. the uh, emergency shelter fund that and fund. that whole thing about the <clears throat> the storage the, the container. container at the school yeah. oh, trying yeah. to get some traction about um, getting that replaced or repaired or whatever so that they can be properly stored uh, emergency shelter do they, supplies. I told them to talk do they to have you? grant money out there for stuff like that? And I'll check because I, they had two other... That's what I thought. They, they had, had two, two other containers out there that they wanted to get rid of. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, what I thought. Was, and I think the only thing that was stopping them from getting rid of them is they have a bunch of like chairs and desks and stuff in there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let me, yeah, let me. Because I told that. Paul, I or told just, Paul to talk you know, to you. Point me in a direction that you'd like to talk to about it. You know, I know you. Yeah, you probably just go talk to Pierre, the um, principal. I mean, he's new there, so he probably doesn't really know much either. So yeah. he, he'll then go talk to. Um, but then we could get, either get rid of that one, you know, get it out of mm -hmm. It's just, it's getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, <clears> the <throat> July 10th yeah. flooding, well, the Red Cross stuff was in there and. That's yeah. when you know it's it's beyond its years mm -hmm. and it yeah. needs a new one. But somebody did say that somebody at the school has one that they just aren't really going to be using much. So they, they had three totally back there, mm -hmm. one right. of which was ours, and there was right. two yeah. other ones that were yeah. just sitting there. But so there's, a real, there's, there's a real nice one right yeah. next to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's seven hundred and fifty bucks in the capital fund for it, and then we budget some money 
in the general fund, but it would right. be nice to just. I think you said there was fourteen hundred. Yeah, and we spent like eight fifty because we pay to have the generator maintained, the right. Yankee generator mm -hmm. every year, and we pay eight fifty. So that came out of that fourteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's yeah, some fifty. Yeah, let me capital. check with the school. Like, should... it'd be nice to be able to just. I was just here today, get rid but of that oh, uh... eyesore, yeah. and it's a pain to get into. Yeah, it is. So. I have even done, <laughs> yeah. actually had a hard time getting into it when we needed yeah. stuff for the flooding. It's a hassle yes. for sure. So there's a couple there. Mm -hmm. So we got the the traffic and trash ordinances, <clears throat> the gravel roads inventory, and then the human services reorganization. Yep. Um, process. You want us to stick with three, or do we do we have anything else we want to do? Or I spoke with three about the energy audit at the town hall and the town office, and she's yeah. looking for a little help to go through that and get the grants lined up with it and what can be done. It would be helpful because remember we got the MERP grant, the 4,000, and then we were able to get our free energy audits for this building in the town office, which put us in a place where they keep telling us there's like a half a million dollars in grant money, but I'm going to need help interpreting the, well, I mean, I imagine I could stick a plastic butter knife through the outside of town office, but um, it would be helpful since Jordan has construction experience to figure out what we should be applying for out of the grant. You know what I mean? Because supposedly there's, you know, quite a bit of money there that we can apply for, for upgrades and updates, energy efficient. So when we have those done, like the 16th and 18th or, I don't yeah, know. Do you have contact for the 18th? I don't know who's doing them. Okay. I just told, um, they're coming. Well, I'll let them in here. And then one day, and then the day they're doing the town office, I told everybody not to come in until a little bit later. Cause you can't obviously be in the building and, and then they'll, we'll get the results and then I can what ship they, the results what are they doing? to you. Hmm? What are huh? they doing for an audit? Uh, they're full on like the whole thing, blower door test oh, and everything yeah. here and this building I'm not so concerned about, but, um, you know, certainly other, and then just knowing what to apply for in the grant, what are we looking for? So, so energy efficiency audits for the town buildings, so. just town office and town hall. That's all I got was two. And just, yeah. Cause if there is that much money out there, I need to know how to prioritize to what we're going to apply yeah. for. And, you know, they say that now half mil, and then we'll see what they say later. <laughs> when we actually get this stuff. Get some light bulbs. Yeah, exactly. Here's some 99 cent light bulbs. So the other one, um, I'll probably get the thing wrong, but we had the revitalization pieces in the downtown. And I know one thing since I've been on the board, we've talked about it a little bit, but never have gone anywhere was, you know, the whole parking, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. thing in the downtown. And I, I just wonder if Maybe, that's the email i sent you somehow maybe we should put that on like or maybe it doesn't necessarily have to be a select board goal but we should probably start talking about it yeah um, well i had said did you get the email i sent you with the stuff and then the yeah, estimate we're I mean, going to be looking for money for that for a scoping we've study been slow strolling this thing for for well nine, we just, 10 years now yeah but we didn't get the finished bethel yeah. for all until you know maybe a year ago but um i actually mentioned it to rita tonight so i'm going to be looking for money for a scoping study and mm -hmm. and because we did bethel for all we're going to be in the running for more grant money so but i mean i think i don't know what i'd say well, 85 to 100 again grand. you have Two, the parking study and then the scoping two to three years <clears throat> and you know v trans will be coming back through here so right. It would be nice if we were going to do something, then yeah. I'll make it up. If we were going to shut parking off on one side of the road anyways, at least when V-Trans comes through here, yeah, I agree. when they repave that, we can have it remarked correctly and all exactly. that stuff, I agree. rather than they come through here and then a year later we say, oh, we want to do it. Yeah, you know? and the other thing we have so. to do simultaneously is come from the Bethel for All is redo the town parking lot. Yeah. And also there's a stormwater project in there as well but um well i'll reach out to rita about figuring out the funding for that because we know the next step is mm. the next step is a parking and scoping study so i'll make a note rita okay. parking and scoping and, and then looking at this parking lot out here it's going to have to um yeah it's probably going to have to go to dirt yep and and there needs to be some significant drainage done on the 
upper end. They the did a design as you part can of see that. where all the sub base is failing because there's, yeah. there's water coming off the hill. It's getting underneath. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, it, you know, the surface water goes right. where it needs to go, but there's water yeah. underneath the surface that is destroying the, that. So I think that in the stormwater master plan, they address this was one of the places that Dubois and King address. So we do have a plan for this one. It's, it's about, deteriorating pretty fast, but it's something that we could do in conjunction together. That's whatever, what I was but, thinking. Because if the state um, has, if the state negotiated a deal with somebody, they might do the same tonnage to just come up here. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. we'll see. And, but yeah, that's definitely it. And, and remember, too, and David mentioned it <clears throat> multiple times that, you know, we talked about conduit. Um, that's one thing the energy the committee has stuff. been saying is that they want a conduit in the ground when we do this so that if down the road there's a charging station and I don't know if this is a, you know, how there big this conduit, conduit you just got to find it. I can't remember. I don't know. Oh, I, we'll find it, Dave, when we hit yeah, it. <laughs> I, know I, can, I can give you a, a rough idea where it goes from one end to the other. Yeah. There's two. I believe yeah. there's two, three inch pieces of conduit in the ground. Mm. But that isn't going to do what that isn't going to do what they want to do for a charging station. Because it's got to go one side right. or the other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's you know something to <clears throat> consideration is doing that as a project. But I'll see about scoping study money. Um, do side blocks. Don't forget, there's a ton of condo on the side. <laughs> you know that guy never called me back, so I still can't find the plans when Bethel paid for all that underground conduit mm -hmm. you gave me the contractor name i spoke to his wife she said she'd have him get back to me he's never called me I've emailed they didn't find it when they were doing the water I emailed lines, multiple though. times i I'd, I'd have to it, ask I, it only crosses the road right here truck, no it crosses the road also up by the hardware it goes 45 degrees across uh just before you get to the hardware to that pole over on the other side of the street uh -huh. and it crosses right down here by the back right so and I they, don't know. they didn't run into either one of those. They might have. They must they have. They must have because yeah. that, that condo well, wasn't down that deep. I and will tell you that like we, six or seven of them that go across. We the just road. got from Tim's widow a thousand pictures that we put on a thumb drive that he'd had on his phone that he'd taken through the whole project. Oh, cool. So I just gave it to, so we gave the thumb drive to Richard so he could see how he can, you know, sort it. And, um, but yeah, so I don't know what they ran into there. But we'll talk to Rita. So what we can do is um, <laughs> type these goals up and just have them on the next meeting so we can just visually see them. And if we're good with that, we'll just prove those and we'll work on those. And maybe we could assign at that time, we could assign people if they want to help out on certain goals, uh, human right. services or gravel roads or whatever. Right. Um, probably the least amount that Therese has to do, the better. But yeah. <laughs> but if we need any help with Sorry. anything, we can yeah. always get some oh, yeah. help. So. Of course. <laughs> Happy to help. All right. Anything further on the board goals? Um, anything left on the town manager's report that uh, we haven't hit? Uh, just an update. I know we're getting a lot of questions and stuff about the fire truck. And so I'm just saying, you know what? Just be patient. I've gone through the process with our insurance company and we're on hold. I've talked to the gentleman at the state, state self-insured, and then they have a third party um, authorized rep. And so I've dealt with them and just kind of waiting to see. And so there's a, <clears throat> there's a phrase going around. Everybody's like, are they going to make us whole? So <laughs> here's the mm -hmm. deal. The fire truck is value. Of that fire truck was estimated around 250,000. Our own insurance company would quote unquote, make us whole at 200 and you know, 50, thousand so they never gonna buy it for two <clears throat> exactly though. and you can't you know so right. people we're not over insured we didn't jack up the value of this of the truck so that's where we're at when i spoke to the gentleman at the state you know there was a couple things that came out as obviously the state holds the liability we don't the state does the second thing was he mentioned something about lack of use of the vehicle and i said well we're looking two to three years out for a fire truck and he's like you're kidding and i'm like no i'm not so I'm hoping that, you know, they can do better than just the value of the fire truck. Our insurance company Correct. will do that. No, the insured value of the fire truck. We know we're going to get the insured value of the fire truck. So I'm there, hoping we can bridge the gap between that and what it's worth today and, a, and what the replacement is. And a replacement. Is. So, and, you yeah. know, so we just don't know yet. So I'm just telling people, you know, just 
bear with us. We'll, we'll know when we know. And it's, and it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint because we're not going to get a truck for at least a couple of years anyway. So we'll wait and see how that goes. Didn't you mention that you changed the insurance to a replacement? We did. And that replacement is meaning they're not depreciating it. So we get the value that we put on it okay. <clears throat> because normally your insurance would you get take today's the value. Yeah. would get the, you know, the value mm. minus depreciation. Mm. And, you know, so our insurance had done better than that. So the other thing is I talked to Chris Fors and <laughs> Vorek is tanking right now. And it's a very frustrating process. And God bless Chris Fors. This is the 330,000 we got for trails. And we have been put specifically Chris through the ringer. The state does not have a permit on their website that we need to get to build the a handicap accessible trail down near the on the school property but they keep telling us that we need a permit and i have sent a letter to the state saying as the zoning administrator look quoted our town hmm. you know plan and our zoning regs it does not need a permit we are exempt we are the only organization that has to issue a permit and they are hung up. We have talked to, he's talked to the river engineer. You know, I mean, I can't even tell you how many people mm. he's talked to. He had another meeting today and we're prepared at this point. We may have to throw in the towel on that chunk of the trail. And we're trying to get an on-site meeting so that they could at least, they're making all these, um, you know, comments and stuff without actually having to come to Bethel to look at where the trail is. So we may end up, you know, Chris and I talked about is just saying, forget it. We're going to forget about that section and maybe move <clears throat> some of that money somewhere else. Or I said to him at this point, I'm ready. We put a value on that. We'll just write him a check and give it back to him because they're tanking us as far as the construction season. So we may end up having to get, um, an, an extension through no fault of our own. Chris has been fighting this for months. So I mean, even though, <clears throat> even though in our plan, it doesn't show that we need a permit. Could, could you just go to the DRB and get a permit? They're not looking for that kind of permit. Uh -huh. They're looking for a state permit and it all stems from the July flooding. I think that they had some VOREC money had been used in another town, built a trail, it flooded. And so now they're obviously want to protect their investment, but we have already, Chris has downgraded the trail to a more man made materials and we, and, you know, he's done everything and we just, they keep saying we need a permit, but and I got a hold of Jackie dagger, the lady at, um, head of the board. And I'm like, you have no authority. The state has no authority to grant a permit here. Only the municipality and our ordinance says we are exempt, but right. It's it's so you think go. at that point <clears throat> you being the zoning that you could write the exemption. and I did and I sent it to right. him but no dice so huh. now we have the local ANR rep we've already talked to Jaron Borg we're talking to Ned we're talking to Claire uh, and so there's like four people in it so finally Chris reached out and was like look at there's no permit that you even have on your website that the state issues that we need. So we're just trying to get them off the dime. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that we can actually get them to come to Bethel so that they can see what it is we're trying to do. But we're just kind of spinning our wheels right now. So if we end up needing a project extension, this is no fault of ours. This is just the state. Well, you would think that they would easily just say you need this whatever permit. Yeah, but you know what? To the email. Yeah, yeah, they don't have one. That's the whole thing is th it's like they're going to have to invent one or something. So I'm not really sure, but <clears throat> we're kind of in a holding pattern. And hmm. and uh, so, you know, God bless Chris Boers. He's been, you know, it's been an uphill battle. So hopefully in the next couple, three weeks, we'll have some more news to tell you where we stand with that. Other okay. aspects of OREC are going through, but that trail is sucking pond water right now we just i don't know what we're and they'll be coming do. in soon to probably in the next month to do that piece between the skate park and the brick i would assume I, thing. I, would, I would assume i'd have to I'm ask assume, Chris. assuming we're going to want to <laughs> kick the skate park off as soon as yeah, possible yeah right? absolutely so yeah i'd have to ask okay. um chris spores but other than that because i know <laughs> that gentleman will get pretty busy here in the next month yeah, just saying yeah, so no, they want to have him come in and do that work Soon. Yeah, I'll ask Chris for us about so after it. After that, um, he won't be available for us. No, R-E-M. 
Mr. Mark. Yeah. But yeah, so that's the, other than that, I think my notes were self-explanatory. Okay. Uh, we had the select board meeting minutes from the 11th. Any amendments or are we good to approve as written? Okay, all in favor? Uh, all right. And the other communications, the uh, rec committee had their stuff and the conservation. In the rec committee that they are, um, the committee will plan their skate park opening party at their April meeting. Well, I think after the snow, and it's the first <laughs> Wednesday of the month, which is yeah. well, and that tie-in work's got to get done. And right, we talked about so that's, that. Then we told them that. Yeah. So, well, I know we've told I them that, but sometimes I wonder if they so it's, I know it's not going to happen on email. April third. You're like, you can't do that until it's like, okay, that's fine. All right. Yeah. So, right. We can't do a whole lot without a pool director, can we? Yeah, we're still moving forward. Um, right now, what we're doing is it, <clears throat> we have had a couple applicants and we are also, obviously what we do at the pool depends on whether we get life, how many lifeguards we get back and how many of those lifeguards are WSI certified to teach swimming lessons. So the pool will open regardless and um, it'll just, Ooh. what's gonna depend on is what those hours are based on how many people we get to come back and whether or not we have um, are able to even offer swimming lessons. That's usually a really big trick for us is depending because not a lot of young people are lifeguard and WSI certified. So, but I do believe at this point we have a couple applicants and Dietrich's out for part of the week. So we'll probably regroup next week. And how does it look for lifeguards right now? You know, she's, she has a couple that are coming back. So I feel like we're starting to see, you know, coming together. I figure worst case scenario, pool opens, <clears throat> you don't offer swimming lessons and you had free swim mm. on certain nights, days or nights or hours, depending on what we have for staff. But it's a little bit too early to tell because we're just starting to hear back from college kids and stuff that are coming back. So we'll probably have a little more update on that as we move forward. And did tell the <clears throat> rec committee that, the pool director will not be doing any family fun Fridays. So if they want to take those over, feel free. And maybe they want to reach out, like maybe the conservation commission wants to do a family fun Friday one night or something. Dietrich has plenty of games and stuff and information to give them. So, and on that drafted the job description today for the part-time assessor's office person, assistant town clerk, um, Rick and Pam approved that. So we're moving out with that. And then I drafted the utility job description and sent it to Richard Morgan and AJ to take a peek at to see if we missed if I missed anything there. So um, job descriptions are getting done and ads are going out. So. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, the only question I had on the um, budget status. Yeah. I'm just assuming that the fire department was all paid out. Is that why? Yeah, all they their... get paid okay. out once a year. Yeah. Because I looked at that and it's, it must have been they. They get paid, paid out, out once a year, neither uh, end of November, beginning of December. Okay. Because other than that, it all looked. Yep. Looked like it was going pretty well. So. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, I would just uh, the other thing. Um, because sometimes it lags behind. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to, so salt wise right now, we are, well, as of this report, we're at 18,000 of the 92,000. So yeah. he just ordered some. And um, so I know we paid a bill and, and he just ordered some too. So I know I just saw the shipping order. I put it in his mm -hmm. box. And then um, <clears throat> obviously Pam's done a couple payables since then, but we and, haven't used much salt. And then, and I know we had it. Um, we had talked about this a few different times, but the the gravel quantity. So that seventy thousand that's in there right now is that a hundred percent what is on our budget, or hat and has the FEMA gravel been taken out of that, or do yep. we still have FEMA gravel? This is a hundred percent us. Okay, because we've used way more gravel just with the multi the mud you know, seasons multi mud seasons. Yeah, okay. so I have taken out the FEMA gravel is is now in fund eighty nine with all the FEMA expenses. Okay. But yeah, that's us. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, 
I don't think I've ever seen the sand pile this big this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just been crazy weather. Mean, like holy mackerel, that's like that's, that's gonna be half the sand we need at least. Right. Yeah, for next year. So we'll we be put it up. So hopefully that'll help us. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Okay. No, those are the only questions I had on that. Um. Oh, and the tax sale date is set. Did I tell you that? I don't, know. Maybe I don't remember. May 16th is the tax sale uh, at 11 a.m. So we have, we're moving forward with the tax sale. So I did have one payoff on Friday. So um, but we're moving forward with the tax sale and that information will be on our website and everything um, coming up. So Okay. All right, anything else come before the board? If you're none, just need a motion to adjourn. All right.